Boom! What's up, everybody? Mm -hmm. My name is Kim Scogwell, and I'm back. So I've been gone for a little bit. I had some troubles with my MacBook Pro and Apple, but I finally got it sorted, got it fixed, and the answer was changing over to Windows. And that's been great, except for I'm missing something, I believe, because one of my M.2s won't show up, but that's not, not why you're here. So, when I migrated from Affinity Photo on Apple to Windows, I found out that there was one setting that wasn't set up from the get-go, and it took me a while to figure out where to go and change it, so you might want to stay tuned unless you have figured out this set fill color shortcut. And I'm going to show you my other uh, top something uh, settings to just check out straight from the get-go. That way you get the best result when you start editing. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Remember to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Leave some comments down below on uh, what's your favorite settings and why you use them. Let's get to it. So we're back inside Affinity Photo and we go up to Edit Preferences to get up this dialog box here and we're going to start on General. So I like to have Import PSDs here as text as rather than a bitmap and then Smart Object whenever possible and copy item as SVG. That just gives you a lot more flexibility straight out of bat. And then color profile, put the RGB color profile and 32-bit color profile to the highest color profile there is, which you have here, and that is this ROMM RGB. This is basically a pro photo. It's got a little bit more range. And then you go here, Tick this box, convert open files to working space. That means if you go, we have this document here, and I go into stock here and get a picture from Unsplash, and it will come up and say, I'm going to convert this Unsplash picture to this color profile. And that just makes it a whole lot easier to blend those two images together. Because from Unsplash stock photos, that would be a JPEG. And here you which has very limited um, color range. And then in the Pro Photo ROM, uh, color space is a lot more. Cool. So now we're going to go into performance, give it as much as you can on the RAM usage. The rest of you can leave alone. I like to set the under limit pretty high. Then we're going to go to perform, uh, not performance, sorry, to user interface. And here I like to. Tick this show selection in layers panel. I'm going to go over this in a different video how I use this. So we can go back out here to tools, and this is a, a good one. Use shift key to cycle tool groups. And that's because if I go over here and I to the brush tool, which should be this one, you can see it's got a brush there. And if I just hit the B, on my keyboard, it's changing the brush here. So if I was doing something here, I was painting something, then I used a different tool. Uh, we're gonna move, I'll move this a little bit, then I hit B twice without really noticing it. And then you can see I've all changed the brush already. And that will be super annoying because then now you would have to go back and redo it. So if you go here and you put Use shift key to cycle tool groups. If I now hit B, you can see over here it won't change. Now I have to hold shift down and press B and it's going to be uh, changing. So that's a really good one. And then we're going to go hit the keyboard shortcut. And if you haven't done this and you see like I'm used to Mac and it Affinity has it set on Macs. I don't know why they don't have it set on Windows. Sorry about that. So if you look up here, you can see my foreground color is purple. If I now hit D, it resets to black and white. And green, I can 
hit X, you can see you change between the foreground colors. And then I, now I want to go back to black and white again. So now I would have to move all these sliders over here to get it black. And that takes forever. So in all you could do is just press a D. And the way you do this is you go edit again, preferences, keyboard shortcuts under the photo tab here. You go down on file, you click it once, you scroll all the way to the bottom to miscellaneous. And then you find your set fill uh, to black and white. And you can put whatever letter you want. I came from Adobe Suite and they use D and it's a really hard thing to break. So I just use D still. Cool, so now you know how to do that. And that is pretty much it. That's my top 10 tips. Or I don't know if that was 10. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It was at least top 10 tips on how you set up Affinity Photo on Windows uh, if you're coming from Mac like I did. And uh, that's it. I hope you like it. If you did, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And leave some comments down below. What are your favorite settings in Affinity Photo?